In the previous lecture, we learned about how we can calculate impedance using phasor diagram. In this tutorial, you're going to learn about the phase relationships in AC circuits. Remember, AC signal is sinusoidal in nature, and therefore you have one positive half wave, and then you have this negative half wave. That completes one uh, cycle. Okay, and if you are looking at the angle over here, so this represents 90 degrees and this represents pi and therefore this represents 2 pi completing the whole, uh, you know, complete cycle. Now, if you look at the graphics over here now, you have a AC circuit with a resistive load over here. Notice uh, this orange here is basically the voltage and then the dotted line represents the current both current and voltage reaches their maximum value at the same time okay so alternating voltage and current are in phase in resistive circuits but that is not the case when we are considering capacitors or inductors let's now look at the inductive circuit ac sine wave Again, it's the same circuit, similar circuit to what we had in the previous lecture. So you have an inductor over here. And I want you to uh, look back uh, and recall uh, the analogy of the water wheel that we gave to understand how the inductor works. Okay, so when the water flow, water flows, because this water wheel will act as a high resistance, okay this will offer high resistance initially and the current will not flow or a very tiny amount will flow but gradually and gradually the wheel will start to pick up the momentum and the electrons will then flow and therefore the current lags okay the current lags because this water wheel has some weight which offers high resistance so current lags voltage in an inductive circuit okay Therefore, if you look at over here, uh, unlike uh, the case in the resistive load circuit, which has an AC signal, the current and voltage, they both reach their highest or maximum value at two different times. Okay, uh, and even though I have time over here, but here current lags voltage by 90 degrees. Okay, mathematically we say it 90 degrees and that is well, that is one of the reason when we were doing the phasor diagram over here, we actually plotted XL in the positive Y axis, right? Remember? Okay. All right. Now let's look at a circuit with the capacitive load. You have this capacitive load here now. In the case of the capacitor load, it's the opposite. Current leads the voltage in a capacitive circuit. Remember, your capacitor inside, they have these charge plates which have opposite charges. And um, so the, the primary capacitive load, uh, which is a capacitor in this case, the current is going to lead the voltage. And it's true because the current will have to go past uh, these two plates in the capacitor where charge is being stored. Uh, only after a charge accumulates at the plates of the capacitor, a voltage difference is, uh, is established, okay? Remember the analogy that we had where we had the tank and we had the water pouring in, right? Okay, the potential difference is going to uh, happen when there is, you know, uh, when you have a water filled in the tank and there, the higher it is, the more charge it can store in the tank. So remember, only after the charge accumulates at the plates of the capacitor, the voltage difference is established. And in this case, current leads the voltage in a capacitive circuit. Uh, this is usually mathematically, we say that voltage lags current or current leads voltage. Phase angle of a capacitor opposition to the current is 90 degrees however okay because current leads and uh, uh, voltage uh, is reaching its value first and then the current reaches its value and uh, therefore that is the reason when we were doing the phasor diagram we had the reactance the vector representation of the uh, in a capacitive reactance in the negative 
uh, Y region. Uh, so, so that's the uh, difference between different phase relationship in AC circuits for resistor, capacitor, and inductor.